So we came to current police station to look for help. We drove right into the station, but those two cars followed us right inside and forced me into their car, a white pro box. I was sandwiched between two men in civilian clothes. I was handcuffed and I was assaulted. They were demanding to know why I was resisting arrest. And I told them I was not resisting arrest, I was resisting criminals. I don't know who you are. You have not identified your, yourselves. And up to now, as far as I am concerned, you are criminals. They drove me down uh, Langata Road, up to near, I think around the turning of uh, Langata South Road, where they stopped, they made a few calls. I don't know to who, but they were, I gather they were talking to their superior. I could hear the muttering words about Alpha, Bravo, Sierra. I don't know what, the, what those mean. But I had them mention DIC headquarters. Then after some long conversations, they decided to turn back. Uh, we came with them. I was still handcuffed in the car. We stopped here, just across the road here, near, Shell near the Shell petrol station. That is the time they asked for my ID, and I gave it to them. They looked at it. They said, you're the Francis Macharia guy, though? I said, yes. One guy got out, made some phone calls, came back again, asked for my phone number. I refused to give it to him. They had previously asked for my phone also, which I did not have with me because I had left it with my son. Um, after another long telephone conversation, they came back and the guy sitting behind was asked to remove my handcuffs. Then they told me it was a case of mistaken identity and that I am free to go. They did not explain how it could be mistaken identity. They did not explain how they could have trailed me right from my home or near my home if it was indeed a case of mistaken identity. So as far as I was concerned, those were still criminals. Anyway, they brought me back to current police station from where they had abducted me in the first place and they went away. Um, they were telling me now I can go home. But I said, no, I am not going home. First, I will report an attempted abduction. This is a criminal offense. So I have already um, recorded an incident, reported a crime. It is in the occurrence book. Now I am waiting to write a statement. They have been telling me to go to DCI headquarters to report there, but I said no, the incident happened here within the prisons of current police station. So any statement I write, I will write it here at current police station. I got a call from the DC, from the OCD, OCPD Langata. She was telling me to go and uh, talk to her there. I said no, if she wants to talk to me, she can come here. Now she has told me that they are sending somebody from Langata, which is the mother police station for this area, to come and set, take my statement. So that is what I am waiting for. Are you, are you convinced that uh, the intimidation that has happened to, to you today is connected to the work that you do, the, the articles that you've been writing? Certainly. As we have seen all these abductions, I am not the first media person to be abducted or to be arrested. It is clear that all these things are connected, that the police are operating outside the law. 
to arrest, intimidate, harass innocent uh, people. And on this, we must lay blame where it squarely lies. That is on the government of Kenya. On the National Police Service, or the Inspector General of the National Police Service, on the Director of DCI, and all the officers who are carrying out these rogue activities. And I think what I have to say is that we cannot sit back and allow Kenya to descend into a lawless state. And therefore, it is the duty of all who have been subjected to this, this kind of intimidation to follow up and to seek legal redress. How are so you feeling after this awful experience? It is extremely <laughs> traumatizing. Because when you are abducted by unknown people who do not identify themselves, when I asked them to identify themselves or who they are, their response was that they have a Subaru, therefore I should know they are policemen, and that they have guns, therefore they, I should know they are policemen. And I told them that, first of all, everybody can drive a Subaru. It is not a preserve of the police. Secondly, all the criminals we know have guns. Therefore, that is not an identity. They refuse to show their identity cards. And, and I think we, we cannot sit back and see our country go back into a police state. We fought for democracy. We achieved what we call democracy in 1991. We cannot go back to the era of dictatorship, to the era of a police state, to the era of rogue cops who abduct people left, right, and center, and even kill people and throw their bodies away wherever they throw them away. We were told there will be no more abductions by this government. There will be no more extrajudicial killings. <laughs> they are not showing that they meant it. Um, having problems with the law enforcers comes with the job. We call it hazards of the trade. I have, have, I have had my own share of uh, problems. But in the past when police have wanted to talk to me, they have called me and asked me whatever questions they wanted. I have never had to go through abduction, kidnapping by people who I do not know whether they are police or whether they are terrorists. And up to now, I don't know whether those are policemen or terrorists. We don't know. So we will be demanding a proper, proper accountability, a proper explanation from all those who are responsible and who claim that they are in charge of security in Kenya. Are you reading a pattern from what happened yesterday with the shooting of a journalist and now today? Is it something that you think? Yesterday, a journalist who was covering the protests in Nakuru was shot at close range by police officers. We have had many other cases of journalists being uh, mistreated and beaten. And I think just yesterday there were statements from Kenya Editors Guild, of which I am a member. There was a statement from KUJ, there was a statement from Association of Media Women in Kenya, there was a statement from Media Council of Kenya on the journalist who was shot. Obviously, those statements are not being taken seriously. So we must now seek um, remedy in the courts. Yeah, 
daraja sasa hivi na ikizingatiwa kwamba ilifanyika ndani ya kituo cha polisi pale ambapo ni salama kwa ndafu salama Andrew my son ako sawa he was very brave he was the one driving and managed to drive to drive me away right into the station he is also the one who managed to take a video of what was happening and also to share that video in various uh, let's say with my friends and family but obviously an 18 year old young man going through that seeing his father abducted in a very brutal violent fashion must be very traumatizing for him it is traumatizing for my other children who are all here who got the news and were wondering what is happening it is traumatizing for my mom in Nyeri at the age of 90, 95 getting this news that her son has been abducted and she doesn't know by who so it is traumatizing for everybody involved not just me for me i call it hazards of the trade but there are those young ones who depend on me who love me there are my elders there are my siblings there are my friends all of them will be traumatized i do not believe that that francis guy though I am twice his age. That Francis guy though does not live where I live because they trailed me from my house. That Francis guy though as far as I know does not drive a car that resembles mine. They, it is me they were looking for. It is me they were trailing. Does this cow you? No. We cannot be cowed. I think we were there during the struggle against the one-party dictatorship, if we resisted Moi, who are these ones? Yes.